minutos, porque no, no te deja entrar a dos unos. Vale. Aquí tengo nuestro schedule. Para todos aquellos que, que, que quieran, bueno, muy buenos días a todos, para todos aquellos que quieran conocer un poco más sobre, sobre el, lo que se está llevando dentro de nuestro chico.tv, por favor, síganos en nuestras redes sociales, en nuestro Instagram oficial, neurosurgical.tv y en bajo oficial, para poder enterarse de esta y muchas más charlas de, de neurocirugía. Okay. Voy a compartir mi pantalla para ver el sketch. ¿Se ve, doctor? Ya. Yeah. Mm. Ok. This is our schedule. First, eh, claro, empieza Dr. Francisco mm. González Llanos. And uh, he, start, he will start with the, with the lecture of anatomy and clipping techniques for complex anterior circulation in aneurysms. Then Dr. Pablo Rubino. Then uh, Dr. Clara Martín. And Dr. Francisco Llanos closed this day. Claro, y luego volvemos a las siete, a las 17 horas. Ajá, di, perdón, 19 horas. Otra vez el doctor Francisco Llanos. Then extra dural mini, temp, mini, mini peritemporal approach, minimal invasive uh, postlateral transcavernous frontorial approach, mi plata, by doctor Jorge Mura. Then doctor Francisco González Llanos again, by passing the reasons of anterior circulation, and we finish. Yes. Okay, so we have like four or five uh, lectures today. Yes. Please, all of all of us, if you want to, if you want to know how many webinars we are arrange, please go follow us on Instagram, neurosurgical.tv, guión bajo official. You can see here on, on our feed of Instagram all the webinars that we are organizing and we are like sponsoring. Thank you. Son de los españoles, gente. Estaba el chileno y. Ah, iba a Casi me me duele el fondo. ¿no?
Are you guys there? Nothing is right. Oh boy. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. No, we are here. We are here. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Don't worry, doctor. Yeah. Okay, everyone, just hang on. They're having a little tech difficulties over in Madrid. We ran through it yesterday. It was okay. I'm sure they'll get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Margarita, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Margarita? Doctor? Hello?
Okay, be patient. Uh, be patient. They're trying to work things out. <clears throat> Uh, Ariel. Ariel. Yes, Doc, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah while well, we're waiting, why don't, why don't you go through the schedule again for the panelists? Okay. Well, okay. They're trying to arrange it, but just screen share the uh, schedule and it's just sh show the show. The, this is part of TV production. Yes, this is part of recording live. You yeah, I mean? we can do we can kind of do different things. Yes. Okay, so I will I will I will share my screen for show you the the schedule. Yeah. We are here. Yes. So para todos los que están para todos los que recién se están integrando a nuestras a nuestra plataforma, por favor, síganos en nuestro Instagram oficial, neurosurgical.tv-oficial, para enterarse de este y muchos otros webinars que nos estamos encargando de realizar. Muchísimas gracias. Ahora yo voy a mostrarles el sketch. The uh, it's stuck there, Ariel. The screen, Doctor. Yeah, your screen was stuck. You you were gonna screen share the, the schedule. Yes, I'm. I'm screening that. Oh, I can't. Well, I can't see it? it. Can't see it. Oh, let me. Or please wait yeah. a second. I will uh, get out and enter again. <clears throat> Okay, 
Uh, so, Doctor, I'm, I'm entering with another account. Okay, no hurry. Oh, we got... We're still waiting, everybody, for Madrid to straighten out their internet uh, problem. Okay. They have some difficulties. Yeah, it was fine yesterday. <clears throat> we were on for an hour. Okay, now I'm entering again. Okay, now can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Yes. <laughs> Ahí estamos. Doctor, can you can you please uh, give me the co-host again? Uh, I I entered with another account. Okay. Entonces, aquí estamos. Este es nuestro programa oficial. Uh, doctor, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, if you can't do it, Francisco can do it. Francisco, yes. can you share the screen, please, of the schedule, unless Ariel can do it? Yes, I, I, I can. No, Ariel looks like he's making it there. Okay. Uh, Ariel, can you Okay, okay. No, the uh, schedule doctor, is. Uh, I have, I have. Yeah, I let have, me, uh, let me. Uh, okay, I'll do it, uh, Real. Let me just put the I have, I have some, on some kind briefly. of issues, but with uh, Francisco is trying to, to put it. Well, I think I got it. Uh, hold on. It's a, it's a different schedule, and I think what you guys have. Yeah, this is Yes, this okay. is the, this is the latest. The uh, schedule. That I just got. Okay. Yeah, there you go, Ariel. You can, you can, you or Francisco can go through that if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Entonces, ese es nuestro schedule para el día de hoy, nuestro, nuestro calendario para el día de hoy. Hoy día, diciembre 16 de 2021. Pero vamos a empezar con una presentación oral a cargo del doctor Francisco González Llanos. Posteriormente, eh, la lectura sobre anatomy and clipping techniques for complex anterior circulation and aneurysms, a cargo del mismo doctor González Llanos. Posteriormente, con anterior circulation and anatomy and anterior circulation clipping del doctor Pablo Rubiano de Argentina. Siguiendo con la doctora Clara Mar Martín, Terional and Mini Terional Approach, Clinical and Anatomical Comparative Study. Y finalmente, pues vamos a darnos un break, si no sin antes por repasar algunos casos virtuales es del doctor Francisco González Llano. De ahí nos volvemos a encontrar a las 19 horas hora Madrid con el, con el doctor Francisco González Llano, posteriormente con la presentación del doctor Jorge Mura, Extradural mini, tem, mini, mini, mini Pretemporal Approach, Minimal Invasive Posterior Lateral Transcavernous Transtentorial Approach, Mi Plata, de Chile, y vamos a continuar con la lectura de Bypass in Aneurysms and Anterior Circulation del doctor Francisco González Llanos, y finalmente vamos a cerrar a las 20 y 45 horas con eh, un repaso de casos clínicos en video a cargo del doctor Francisco González Llanos. Esa es nuestra dinámica para el día de hoy. This is our, our today's dynamic. Thank you. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, neurosurgical.tv, y en bajo oficial. Okay, now it's time to put Francisco to work. Oh, Doctor, now it's time to put Francisco to work. Francisco, 
please screen share uh, my Facebook account and go through the schedule we have this week. The, you're, you're my friend on Facebook, right? Right. They, yeah, go, they, go to my page and go through the, the webinars we have. Okay, one moment, por favor. Okay. Yes, Sharia, the program is in English, but to accommodate our Spanish friends, we are also doing Spanish. Okay, thank you, John. Okay, oh yeah, hi, how you doing? I'm oh, fine, right. yeah, you good? Yeah, where are you from, Sharia? Uh, Bangladesh. Where? Bangladesh. Oh, welcome. Thank you. I'd like you to have meet everyone. I, you know, we, we have something called the Neurosurgery Lounge. After yeah. the telecast, people go there. It's private, it's not televised, and we get to meet each other. Okay. So I'm gonna, we'll make an announcement. Right, mm -hmm. uh, Ariel and uh, Francisco? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you get to meet Latin American medical students too. And anyone else who wants to drop in. And hopefully, hopefully we get the speakers to drop in to meet the people, not just talk to them. There you go. Hopefully we'll meet Jorge and hopefully we'll meet Sunday. Uh, Sunday's a Japanese, I don't know if you mentioned that, Ariel, but Sunday's a Japanese day. It's four presentations. I'm trying to get them to do more. And from Spain, they said they're working on the difficulties and they're, they're making progress. <clears throat> Hello, John. You're yes. There? Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Fine. Good. Good. Uh, we're, we're we're just waiting here, uh, Shariah. Okay. Uh, are you a, a resident or medical student? No, I'm a young young neurosurgeon. Yes. Oh, okay. You're neurosurgeon. Okay. You you finished residency and everything. Yes. Very good. Did you get to see uh, Charlie Teal? Yeah, was, my residency. Boy, that's new stuff to me. Connect homes. Is that new to you too? Connect homes. Uh, that's why. I, yeah, that's new to me uh, too. Uh, actually, that's why I missed uh, last uh, uh, um, lecture of Amitabh Amitabh Shah. I missed that. The I didn't got the new concept of the lounge. Oh yeah, we're gonna try that. Uh, after this is over, you're gonna to get to meet uh, the people. Because what I saw when these in these Zoom webcasts is there really wasn't much interaction. People would come, would watch, and then at me, maybe at the end go hi, and then the end, the broadcast ends. <laughs> There's no networking. 
so hopefully we provide that so you guys get to know each other a little bit anyways. Because as you know, you've been to conferences. Uh, you make great contacts at conferences. <laughs> I used to get jobs at conferences. I worked in the ERs and the way I met other ER directors, I'd go to a conference and I'd have a wallet full of numbers by the time I left. Do you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Hi, hi, Margarita. Wow, what ha what happened to the good connection you yesterday? Horrible. I I don't know. Doctor, I think I think she said that if we can wait uh, a little more. Okay. <clears throat> well, the connections yesterday were good. They were. So what happened? Hey, hold on, everybody. Hello. Oh, Margarita. Yes, that's better. That's better. You got a better connection. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I really am not Margarita. I am Maria Canizares, one of the doctors. Uh, in the world, uh, we have technical problems with the computer. So this is really a problem. We are trying to pass the connection from the phone to the computer. We are so sorry, but maybe we, have, we need five more minutes. Um, could you wait for us? Okay, is Dr. Yanos going to present? Margarita? Or are you still working on that? Yes, we stay on that. The connection still seems a little iffy. Is the connection... So, uh, since uh, late 70s here at Hospital Abad, uh, it was born the first uh, microsurgery experimental lab, uh, in which one uh, the neurosurgeons came uh, to develop and improve the surgical skills and bring these skills into the real operating rooms. Uh, okay, now, who, who is speaking? Who is speaking? Over, there? Uh, neurosurgery. Is that, uh, that, must a, that must be a video, uh, really right? Long tradition of uh, neurosurgery, uh, mic Rita? microsurgery school that was uh, keep and continued uh, year after year and generation after generation. Uh, in uh, to uh, 2006, uh, it was. Yeah, that's uh, okay. That was a video playing. As you can see, at Neurosurgical TV, we have a seamless production. Yeah. Dr. Maria says, uh, please wait a moment. Doctor, if you want, I can share my, my screen. I just eh, eh, cambié mi, mi equipo, entonces ya puedo compartir audio mientras comparto pantalla. Okay, okay andale, please. Gracias. Ok, este es, es el horario para el día de hoy. El día jueves eh, diciembre, eh, 10 de diciembre de 2021 tenemos una sesión académica a, de 1 a 30 pm a 3 pm hora Madrid, que sería, si me parece bien, 
las seis y media de la mañana a las ocho eh, de la mañana ahora México. Ok. Excuse me, Margarita, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Francisco. Uh, yes, Margarita, you tried to say something? Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, okay 10 minutes. I'm sorry, Francisco. Go ahead. Gracias. Bueno. El día viernes de 17 de diciembre de 2021 tenemos también otra vez mecánica que comienza de la 1 de la tarde a las 3 de la tarde hora Madrid para hacer un break y luego volver a retomar la sesión a las 7 de la noche para finalizarle ese día a, a las 8.45. El día sábado 18 de diciembre tenemos... Eh, la continuación de las sesiones comenzando a la 1.30 pm y eh, finalizando la primera ronda a las 3.30 de la tarde para continuar a las 7.30 de la tarde y finalizar la jornada a las 9 de la noche y por último para cerrar con broche de oro el día eh, domingo eh, 19 de diciembre de 2021 tenemos una sesión matutina desde las doce y media del día, hora Madrid, claro, y finalizar la jornada y también eh, darle cierre a este congreso con broche de oro a las cuatro de la tarde. Esperamos contar con su asistencia y todos están invitados. Muy bueno. ¿Qué más podemos hacer? Y sabes que nosotros va a tener uh, Warlocks en el Neurocircle TV Lounge, porque ella es, es, es un charla oficial. Ella va a tocar piano. Ella es muy buen pianista. Uh, Warlocks en Neurocircle de Thailand. Y ella quiere ah, Dr. Warlocks, she, she, she makes the banners. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. She's a very talented artist. Oh, I mean, she's a really good piano player. And I, I said, why don't you play in the lounge? It's not neurosurgery, but it we'll just invite. Great. We'll just invite people. <laughs> no, it will be great. So, Doctor Warlock will be on in this lounge. What's that? Doctor Warlock will be in this lounge, or no, no. Uh, but maybe, maybe we'll start. Bringing her to conferences after they're yes. over, you know? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> or, or she plays in the background. Or, or people, <laughs> are net, people are networking. Hey, this is television. It's television. Claro. Yes. We have free like use of a TV station. Yeah. We fill it mostly with medical stuff, but I imagine we'll pick, we'll get better at production and, and doing promotions and stuff like that and carving our own space in the TV world of the internet, in neurosurgery. Yes. Because there's one really well-known announcer in these in social media. She, you don't hear about it. She used to be a television announcer, like a weather person type of, you know. Dr. Waterlooks? She would know. I, I her name is Jones. I think last name um, in the United States, and she was a very prominent. Like the predecessor of Zoom was Hangouts, and she was very prominent in Hangouts, but she just couldn't get going. I, you know, like she and she was she was mystified. Why don't TV people discover this technology? Of, of Zoom and, and, and Hangouts, because to me, it's like television. We do the same thing. We, we, we have to book people. We have to schedule them. We have to make sure production is, is good. It's the same thing. Uh, I'm surprised. I'm, I think eventually TV people will migrate to the Zoom space, the more, the more established it gets, because I think it's going to get established more. Yes, we could we could work it. 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we're on the ground floor of this. And uh, yeah. we, can, we can grow, we can create, and uh, in a way, not standard of care, because we're going to make mistakes. Um, but I'd rather make mistakes than not try it, than not try something. Because you don't suffer from making mistakes on the internet. I mean, that stuff like this. Um, but uh... Is that yeah. No, oh, yes, we could we could arrange that kind of things. We can make this like like television. Well, you know, Ecuador has it. You know, have you seen Ecuador TV, right? Doctor, yes, Equatorian TV or, or yeah, it's like a TV, but it's like a television thing. I think they yeah. do new, they do news and stories on the internet. It's like live Facebook, live Facebook, Facebook Live. I think they do. Mm -hmm. Just the usual stuff they cover, but it's free. I mean, you don't need to tell them. Have tables and studios and all that stuff. You just need a desktop. Mm -hmm. uh, Doctor Margarita Maria, Doctor. I, I think she had a kind of connection issues. I don't know what is happening. You know, I guess we could do that while we're waiting. We introduce people. Uh, okay, panelists, we're gonna do. We're gonna introduce everybody while we're waiting. And you don't have to introduce yourself if you don't want to. Just if I call on you, just don't say anything, and, and we'll just pass to the on to the next person. Uh, Once you can, you start, Francisco. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I you have your picture? Oh, good, good. You have a picture. Okay. I am Francisco Garcia, and I am a student from Mexico. Uh, I be here. I am here because I want to work in the future like a neurologist. But I am uh, very interested in neuroanatomy. So it's a it's a pleasure to work with you, and I'm very happy. Okay, welcome, uh, uh, Ariel. Briefly, Ariel, introduce yourself. Okay, uh, well, I can I can uh, put on my video, and I don't I don't know why, but I'm Ariel Morisita. You have a camera? Um, your camera? No, Ariel, no, you don't I, have it. I, I I really don't have it. I don't know why. I okay, can't, okay, I can't put okay, it on. Go ahead, okay, go ahead. but but I'm a fourth year medical student here in Cusco, Peru, and I want uh, to be a researcher. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ariel. Yes, thank you to Doctor Roda, Doctor Cartier, Doctor Gonzalezano, Doctor Maria. Especially to the okay, Ariel, Ariel, okay. And I would like to finish with this sentence of uh, Raymond Donaghy: "Handle tissue as you would people, gently." And I think Doctor Margarita is the Doctor Janos. Uh, one neurosurgeon. Uh, he uh, was one of uh, the first hours, which uh, has developed a microsurgery course to uh, to to teach other neurosurgeons in Vermont in late. Okay. Uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Margarita is Doctor Gonzalo Janos. We'll connect like in one or two minutes at 12 hours, our Madrid. So like in a five minutes, I think.
still standing by. Los Santos Panelistas, uh, they say they're going to try to reconnect. So just hang in there. Got it, Doc.
Margarita. Margarita, todo está bien. La conexión bien. Haga la presentación de ella. Sí, la conexión es bueno. Sí, la, la batalla bien. Vale, ya. ya estamos en el aire. Vale. A ver si os oyen. Pero bueno, hacer la presentación de ella. Doctor Rubino. Yo tengo que hacer esta. Pero no tengo que poner así. Bueno, usted es uh, doctor Kira. Kira baja la screen share para encontrarte. No, no. No, es el lateral. No sé qué me está Es el lateral lateral. Espera, espera un segundo. Es ese. No, es este, este, perdón. Ahí está, perfecto. Y no, ya que modificarlo porque se queda muy apaisado. Well, you, now you see everyone sees what goes on behind the scenes with arranging these things. Uh, they're essentially trying to hook up the screen on the wall with their laptop, which they've done. It, it works fine to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Margarita or Dr. Rubino? Está allá? Ah, Oh, Margarita, are you there? Or Dr. Rubino? Who is not listo para empezar? Yeah, está perfecto. A ver, yeah. Sí, está listo para presentar de este computador y comparte la pantalla en el su computador. Como siempre. En vivo, tiene que estar. No, no, no. No, está No, no. No, pero si esto, eso es el problema. Sí, 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 para dejar para la verdad. No era eso, no era nada. Dale a Basta. 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 No, 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 Ah, está. Ah, vale, 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 vale. No, pero no es así. Este, este. Ese, ese, ese. Vale, vale, vale. Pero se está ahí el titular. Ve arriba. Baja, 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 un poco más, un poco más. Un poco más. Ok, Margarita, put away me. Ahí. Es que ellos no ven esta parte. Lo mismo es para operar que para cargar la pantalla. ¿Cómo avanza? ¿Cómo avanza con este? Ya estás. Bien. 
Y faltaría. ¿Se ve bien? Sí, se ve perfecto. Sí, sí. Además. Ya tienes que sentarte ahí para lo que Ok. Lo más oscuro es esto. Para la gente. Ahora ponte que te vean aquí. Y me llega a ver a mí acá. Uh, hi, Dr. Rubino. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yes, I, I can hear you. How are you? Okay, muy bien. Uh, okay, uh, tú para introducirte. Uh, okay. Uh, cuando we, está listo. You are starting uh, in two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Cuando? Two minutes. Okay, no problema. Okay. 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 En casa. Eso lo ven así. Si no tiene más, si tiene que apostar, no, no. Si tiene algún motivo. No, pero bueno. Igual. O de alguna cosa que ha ido, animado. Muy bien. Igual hay un programa. Y se escucha con bajo volumen. Sí. Lo subimos un poco. Pero filtra. Sí. Así. Está el máximo. Está bien, igual. Ahí me escuchan eso también. Sí. No, pero eso es de, de realidad virtual. Hola, Jorge Jardín de Ecuador. Vale, muy bien, venga. Yo, o sea, empieza ya. ¿Empieza ahora? Sí. ¿Un puntero tenés o no? Estas se graban, estas se pueden grabar, ¿no? Pero pues grabar ahí, ¿no? Hay una posibilidad, ¿no? En teoría, ¿no? Sí. Puntero, ¿no? Ah, no, no tenemos puntero, sí. Funciona como puntero también el... El mando. El mando. Sí. Pero ellos no van a ver el puntero. No van a ver el puntero. Sí, ellos van a ver. Tú tienes que marcarlo ahí con el cursor. Sí, tienes que marcarlo. Sí, para ver, sí. No. Tú marcalo en el ordenador. Con el ratón. Ahí. Hay que acostumbrarte ahí. Para ti no está bonita la presentación, ¿sabes? Ah, ah yo lo marco acá. Claro, ah, lo marcas ahí. Ok, ¿Y, de, y después los otros quieren ver. No. Bueno, pero aquí nada. Si, es que esto está pensado para eso. Ok. Pues yo voy mirando acá, entonces. Sí, cuando quieras de la okay, eh, entrada. Te presentas, te Pablo Rubino, tal. Le digo a John. John, you're, you're yes. ready. Ok. Yo ¿Tú quiero tú? sacar de la pantalla, ok, porque hay que introducir. Espera. Si yo no necesito, yo. Ok. Ok, Pablo, ¿listo? Ok, listo. Ok, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Good day, this is Dr. John Bennett from sunny Miami Beach. Uh, uh, we have a conference from La Paz Hospital in Spain. And uh, I guess I'll let Dr. Rubino talk a little bit about that before introducing himself. Welcome. Welcome, Dr. Hey. Rubino. Thank you, thank you, John. Thank you, Professor Gonzalez Llano, for the invitation to talk in, in our meeting. And I, I like to start my conference about the uh, anterior circulation um, paraclinal aneurysm. Uh, okay, and this is a compartir yeah, su pantalla, Pablo. Uh, presentation. Okay. No, yeah, no. Compartilo. I look at my, myself. Okay. Compartir la pantalla, por favor. Okay. Ahí, compartir la pantalla, aquí, aquí. Y aquí es pantalla. Esta de aquí. Sí, 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 sí. ¿Ellos están viendo? Ah, no, esta, esta, por ejemplo. Esta y dale aquí compartir. Sí, esa. Sí, eso es. Perfecto. Perfecto, dice. Pero no, no queríamos verlo más grande aquí. Are you watching it no, in no, full no, size? No. Are you watching the full size of the screen? A ver. Yo intenta compartir otra. Van a compartir para es, 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 es que así comparte. Ellos ah, deberían estar viendo el completo. Al completo, vale, perfecto. Sí. Can you see the screen now? Yes, yes. Ok. 
My, my, uh, my topic is anterior circulation of the brain and paracline region. Um, I like to start, when I talk about the anterior circulation, I like to start from the beginning and follow my, my professor, Roton. Um, the first uh, portion of the anterior circulation is in the, in the region of the neck, where the internal carotid artery start. It's not running. Let's see, one moment. Okay, okay, in this, okay. And as you can see in this dissection, just a medial and deeper to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, muscle, you can find the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery bifurcate uh, at the level of the four cervical vertebra into two major branches. One is no battery. One is at the level uh, of the um, one branch is the external carotid artery, as you can see here, and the other is the internal carotid artery. This is the first segment that we call cervical portion of internal carotid artery. Um, it's important to to know the anatomy in this region because sometimes you need to deal or you need to expose this artery for some uh, pathologies, such as uh, in this case, you need to expose the carotid artery in case you need to do a, a bypass, a high flow bypass for a brain aneurysm. So it's very important to know the anatomy of the carotid artery at the level of the neck, okay? And it's also useful to use um, angiography to compare and to learn the anatomy in this region, as you can see here, this is an oblique view of the, uh, an angiography. And this is the first segment that we call cervical portion of internal carotid artery, okay? As you can see here in the bone mask of the angiography, this is triangular bone here that's belong to the uh, petus portion of the temporal bone. So, and here, start the second portion of the internal carotid artery when the artery enters in the uh, temporal bone. And this is the portion that we call petrous portion of internal carotid artery. We can divide this portion into two different segments. The first one is the, um, the, the vertical portion and the second one is the horizontal portion of the petrous uh, carotid artery. You can see now, if we uh, displace anteriorly the carotid artery, you can see that the artery describes a canal in, inside of the petrous bone that we call carotid canal. And this is the second portion of internal carotid artery. Then the internal carotid artery enters uh, or goes just below this ligament that I already removed, this is a petrolingual ligament, and enters in the cavernous sinus, okay? Um, in the second part of, the, of the, my talk, I will describe the relationship of the internal carotid artery and the cavernous sinus, but just for a, for a moment, I will say that this is the portion that we call cavernous portion of internal carotid artery. We can identify here a posterior, a, posterior ascending segment, the posterior vein, the horizontal segment, the anterior vein, and the anterior ascending segment, which is the most controversial point of the carotid artery at the level of the cavernous sinus. I will talk later um, a little bit more uh, about this region. Then the carotid artery um, goes and perform the distal dural ring and enter in the intradural space. As you can see here, this is an anterior and superior view and the internal carotid artery goes posteriorly and laterally and bifurcate just below the anterior perforate system into two major branches. The medial one is the A1 or anterior cerebral artery and the lateral one is the MCA. You will see now from above, you can see how the internal carotid artery 
goes posterior, lateral, and superiorly, and bifurcate into two major branches, okay? I need to come back. Sorry. Okay, anyway, okay. We can divide the internal carotid artery in the intradural space into three major portions. One is the portion that we call ophthalmic segment from the ophthalmic artery until the artery reach the picom. Then we have a, another segment, the second one, which is the communicating segment from the picon to the anterior choroidal artery. And finally, the choroidal segment from the anterior choroidal artery to the um, carotid bifurcation. We can see now the same, the same uh, structure just from below. Um, I would like to just de describe some anatomical uh, details that could be useful for surgery, okay? But this is the, um, the main uh, goal of my, uh, my lecture of the anatomy is not only to know anatomy, but also to use this anatomy for your, your surgeries, to, to have a surgery safer and faster, okay? So the first uh, uh, segment is a segment that we call, the, um, the, or the first artery is the picon. As you can see here, the picon arises from the posterior aspect of the internal carotid artery and goes posterior and medially to reach the PCA. Mm -hmm. um, this is the segment that, that's um, that we call picon segment and we can find perforating branches, not only from the uh, picon artery, but also from the segment. And it's important to know, um, or just to put, uh, to give some info regarding perforating branching and some anatomical variant, okay? In 20% of the cases, as you can see here in your left side, the picon is bigger than the PCA. So this is the variant that we call a fetal configuration of the picon artery. Um, in this case, most of the irrigation from the temporomesial area uh, belongs to the picon instead of the PCA artery. So it's very important to know this anatomical variant that we can find even in 20% of the cases. And it's more frequently to, to find a picon aneurysm when we have this variant and it's more dangerous uh, if we cannot preserve the artery because we can have a very um, catastrophic result. Uh, another important um, thing regarding PCOM artery is uh, regarding perforating branches. As you can see here on, on the left side of the picture, and we can divide the picon artery into two uh, different portions. Uh, uh, the first portion, or the first half, we have many of the perforating branches that go to the basal ganglion and internal capsule that uh, arise from the picon artery. Um, we can find between four and eight perforating branches, but the most important thing is to know where we can find this perforating branching and the direction of the perforating. Uh, all the perforating branches arise from the first half of the picon. So the second half, the posterior part of the picon, especially when this uh, a normal uh, caliber, we can uh, cut the artery to have a more, more room in case we need to expose a, a vascular tip aneurysm. This is the use of, of the anatomy, or even when you computer is not working, it's not familiar with this computer. Um, for instance, here you have an example of the picon artery and the picon aneurysm. So it's important not only to clip the aneurysm, as you can see here, but also preserve the picon artery, especially when we have a very important uh, diameter because uh, you can have a catastrophic result if you, if you clip uh, the artery, okay? The second artery that we have in the, or we can find in the intradural space is the anterior choroidal artery that you can see here. And similar 
to the picon artery, we can also divide the anterior choroidal artery into two segments. The first segment is the segment that you can see here, is the cisternal segment of a, the anterior choroidal artery. This is the segment that we can find many perforating branches that go to the anterior perforated substance and basal ganglion and internal capsule. Um, there is like a reciprocal rule between uh, anterior choroidal artery and picon. If, you, if we find a, a very strong picon artery, maybe the anterior choroidal artery will be very uh, um, a tiny artery, not many perforating branches uh, uh, in the reverse of size. Okay, so this is the first segment that we call cisternal segment of the anterior choroidal artery, and here we find many perforating branches. The second segment is here when the artery enters in the inferior choroidal uh, point. Oh, echo. Uh, when the artery enters in the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle and make many uh, connection and astomosis with the lateral uh, posterior choroidal uh, lateral uh, artery, which came from the posterior circulation. Okay. Here you can see branches coming from the posterior and lateral choroidal artery that make anastomosis with branches from the anterior choroidal artery. Um, another uh, surgical uh, tip, when we are dissecting the ciliary fissure from lateral to median, the first artery that we can identify many times is this artery you can see here, which is the anterior choroidal artery. Then we will find the picon and sometimes the, in this case, a picon aneurysm. And this is because the, the direction of the anti, uh, internal carotid artery, which goes from medial to lateral. And remember that the picon is uh, arising most of the time from the posterior aspect of the wall and the anterior choroidal artery is distal to picon and in a more lateral position. So when we are opening the ciliary fissure, it's common and it's normal to find the anterior choroidal artery. And many times we need to expose the artery because it's very close with the aneurysm and we can include the artery with the clip. So it's a, this is a, will be a very a huge mistake. So we need to identify to avoid this uh, mistake, okay? So we are now in, at this level, we already uh, give some uh, uh, info regarding the picon and choroidal segment. Uh, later I'll be back to the paraclinal area. And uh, finally, the internal carotid artery bifurcate into two major branches. The lateral one, which is the bigger one, is the MCA. And the medial one, which go anteriorly, is ACA or anterior cerebral artery. As I already told you, I like to use a digital angiography to compare, to understand the anatomy. And you can see we are here now at the level of the carotid bifurcation. So we can go medially to describe and understand the ACA, and we can go lateral to learn or understand MCA anatomy, okay? This is an anterior view. We can use a lateral view for, for the um, ACA. I think that the lateral view is uh, the best way to understand the, the anatomy. Um, there are some uh, controversial points because some author divides the um, ACA according to the um, origin of the different branches. I think that is uh, much better to understand the ACA according to the um, corpus callosum and according with the anterior communicating artery, okay? So we can identify this. The first segment is A1 before uh, reaching the a and join the contralateral uh, A1. Then the artery goes just below the corpus callosum. This is the segment that we call A2 or infracallosal segment. The artery goes just um, very close to the corpus callosum. This is in front of the corpus callosum. This is the segment that we call A3 or precallosal segment. Most of the time we can identify here 
this artery, which is the callosal marginal artery, but the callosal marginal artery sometimes is, uh, is not present or we can, can arise from the A4 segment. So it's not a good idea to identify the E3 segment, A3 segment just for the callosal marginal artery. I see this much better to identify because of the relation with the corpus callosum. So the precallosal segment, we can consider as A3 segment. Then the artery goes just above the corpus callosum. And this is the segment that we call A4 and A5, according to the relation with the coronal suture. A4 for the pre-coronal segment, and A5 for a post-coronal segment of the anterior cerebral artery. All that we see, we saw in the angiography, we can now see in the, um, uh, in the anatomy. So this is the first segment that we call A1, then the artery reach the contralateral A1. So this is the segment that we call pre-communicating segment or A1. Then the artery reach the A1 and just uh, form the infracallosal segment that we call or A2 segment, as you can see here in just in the, the front view. Then the artery goes just very close to the corpus callosum in anterior to the corpus callosum. And this is the segment that we call A3. And finally, the artery goes just above the corpus callosum. This is the segment that we call A4 and A5 according to the relation with the coronal suture, okay? And it's important to know this anatomy because many of the aneurysm we will find in the A1 segment. And sometimes the pericalosa, you can find A1, A2, and A3, even A4. I think that uh, from an anatomical point of view or surgical point of view, the, the A2 segment is the most uh, difficult uh, uh, location for pericalosal aneurysm. And you need to, to to perform a, a subfrontal interhemispheric approach to reach this area, um, or you can also use a pterional approach, but both approach you are always very, very far from the lesion. So this is for me the most difficult pericalosal aneurysm. Regarding perforating branches, we have many perforating branches, especially from A1 and A2 segment. Maybe the most important branches or the most important perforating branches is this branch that you can see here, just one or two millimeters distal to the junction of the A1 and A2 segment. And this is the artery that we call um, a recurrent artery of Hauner, which reach the lateral part of the anterior perforate saftan. And we need to take into account this artery when we are dealing with not only acon aneurysm, but also with the carotid bifurcation aneurysm. When you are clipping this aneurysm, most of the time, just behind of the aneurysm, you will find the, the recurrent artery. So we need to identify and preserve this artery because sometimes uh, this artery can irrigate the posterior uh, portion of, internal of the internal capsule, and we can have the patient with some neurological deficit after the surgery. Another uh, anatomical detail that I see in this, or anatomical spot that I consider very interesting regarding uh, um, anterior uh, cerebral artery is the relations of the initial portion of uh, both A2 segments. In 50% of the cases, as you can see in this picture, the left uh, A2 is anterior uh, to the right A2. In the 30% of the cases, the right A2 is anterior, and just only in 20% of the cases, they run in the same at the same level. So it's important not only uh, for understand the why we have a many variants of the A cone. Sometimes A cone could be very, very short, less than one millimeter, sometimes could be longer, three or four millimeters. Sometimes you can have a duplicate a Um As I told you, and it's not, uh, it's uncommon that the a uh, we can find at the same level, or it's most of the time it's an, it's an oblique plane. So we need to perform an oblique view of an, an geography to uh, identify not only the a but also some uh, a small aneurysm at this level. 
Another important thing that I consider very interesting is the position of both A2. In this case, you can see that the left A2 is anterior regarding to the uh, right A2. So for some kind of aneurysm, you know that uh, we can identify at least four types of uh, acon aneurysm, inferior, anterior, superior, and posterior one. I think that the, for the superior one and the anterior one, most of the time, the relation of both A2 could be very useful to identify before doing the surgery um, because it can be useful for selecting the size of the approach. And here we have an example. This is a patient with an acorn aneurysm. This is, we can consider an anterior superior uh, variant. And you can see that the left um, A2 is anterior to the right A2. So for me, uh, I think that this is one important uh, factor to choose the, the site. It's not the only one because we can com consider the, uh, the sac duration, the dominant A1. We can consider many other things, but this is very important thing regarding from the deposition of both A2, because as you can see here, if you choose a, a right side approach, you will have a, an easier dissection of the aneurysm. Um, you can resolve this aneurysm with a straight clip and it's, it's easier than if I were to choose the, the left side. In, if I choose the left side, in this case, I, I have to use a fenestrated clip. I have to make more retraction and maybe even remove part of the uh, rectus gyro. In this case, because I choose the right side uh, approach um, using the anatomy, this is the anatomy that we need to know, I can resolve this uh, problem of this aneurysm without problem, okay? And finally, we have the right side or the, um, the, the lateral bifurcation of the internal carotid artery, which is this artery that we call MCA, which is the middle cerebral artery. And the MCA, we can divide into four segments. This is the first segment that we call N1 or sphenoidal segment, because this segment runs just one centimeter posterior to the uh, lesser sphenoidal wing. And this segment can be also divided into two major portions. This first portion is the pre-bifurcation and the post-bifurcation portion. Um, I think that the most important uh, fact in this uh, segment that we call N1, pre and post, is the, um, where we can find the perforating branches. How many and where? This is, for me, the most important thing. And remember that the perforating branches in number uh, around uh, 10, 10 branches can be found in the posterior and superior aspect of the N1 segment. And all of these branches uh, goes to the anterior perforate substance to reach the basal ganglion and internal capsule. So very important to identify and preserve when we are dealing with some uh, aneurysm in the, not only carotid application, but also in the MCA uh, artery, okay? As you can see here, this is the limit of insula. Um, the MCA make a in 90 degrees posterior turn. So this is the second segment that we call M2 or insular segment. And we call this segment insular because it's running just uh, very close to the insula. Then the MCA makes a new 90 degree turn on the level of the frontal parietal opercula and the superior aspect of the um, Temporal lobe, this is the segment that we call M3, and finally goes to the cortical surface, which is the cortical segment or M4 of MCA. Okay, um, let's make some example of how to use this anatomy. For instance, we have in this case, you can see, is an ABM, is if you know anatomy, just by looking the angiography, you know where is the ABM. You know uh, 
the approach you need to do, how you can reach, and what are the arteries that are uh, interested by the AVM. So if you know anatomy, you can see that this AVM is lateral and inferior to the junction of the M1 and M2 segment of MCA. So this AVM is at the level of the temporal pole. So you need to do uh, a terrional approach, as you can see here, um, make a wide opening of the cilium fissure. You can identify not only the, the AVN, you, 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 you also need to identify the normal structure that must be preserved for, um, for uh, treating this AVM. And this is, you need to identify what are the, the normal arteries, what are the arteries that are uh, forming part of the AVN. Then you need to identify and remove the AVM. And this is the post of angiography where the RVM was removed and the patient did fortunately very well. This is a, was a quick review of the anterior circulation. Um, I told you that I, I, I will make a, a more detailed description about the paraclinal region. As you can see here, for treat this complex lesion, this is a true ophthalmic aneurysm, the giant one. Giant because it's more than 2.5 centimeters. Um, to remove or to, to treat this uh, kind of lesion, you need to know anatomy of the paraclinal region, which belongs to the distal portion of the cavernous portion of internal carotid artery and the, the um, initial origin of the intradural portion of the carotid artery that, that we call ophthalmic segment of the internal carotid artery. So we have to know some detail regarding the bones, regarding the dura, and finally, regarding the artery. So the first thing we need to know when we are talking about the paraclinal area is what is the clinal, the anterior clinal process. As you can see in this picture, the anterior clinal process is the posterior and medial extension of the lesser sphenoidal wing. Um, the clinoid uh, process has three attachments to the skull base. One is anterior and lateral, which is the lesser sphenoidal wing. And we can find two more attachments. Another one is anterior and medial, which, which is part of the roof of the optic canal. And finally, at least for me, the most important attachment, which is the optic strut. Mm -hmm. The optic strut uh, is the posterior and medial attachment of the anterior cranial process to the skull base. Um, you can see now this picture from uh, anterior to the orbit. And uh, you will see that the optic strut is just the inferior and lateral limit of the optic canal. On the other hand, is also the superior and medial limit of the superior orbital fissure. So it's very important when we are removing the anterior cranioid process to know what are the structures that are very close. Not only for removing the, the cranioid process, we need to know these three attachments, but we also need to know what are the structures that are very close to this um, attachment, okay? just uh, below the optic canal, just above the optic strut, we can find the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery. And below the optic strut, we can find the trochial nerve and the oculomotor nerve. And most important, even most important at least for me, posterior to the optic strut, we will find the clinoidal segment of internal carotid artery. So be careful with the drilling of this area because all these structures are very close to the anterior plane of the process. One more uh, spot I'd like to say is that sometimes, as you can see in this, uh, in the right side of the, this clinoid, we can have some uh, junction between the middle plane of the process and the tip of the clinoid of the process. And sometimes we can, they can be uh, joined by the bone. 
forming a, a, like a ring. This anatomical uh, situation is uncommon, but when it's present, it's more difficult to remove the anterior cranial process. I told you about the, the bone relation. Another important thing is to know the dural re uh, relationship regarding the, um, um, that is covering the anterior cranial process. And you can see here in this dissection, the dura, which is covering the um, cranial process, uh, we have um, the, the dura is covering not only the, the upper surface, but also the inferior surface of the anterior cranial process. And this dura goes, especially the superior one, goes 360 degrees around the carotid artery. And this is, um, this is it's forming a ring that we call distal dural ring that most of the time we need to open to expose a paraclinal aneurysm, especially the inferior one, okay? Then from the inferior aspect of the, internal, uh, of the anterior canal process, we have one more ring, which is the proximal dural ring. And in between these two rings, we will find this segment of the artery that we call clinoidal segment of internal carotid artery. And this is another controversial point because as you can see here in this dissection, this is distal dural ring here. The, the distal dural ring is very tight. And the proximal dural ring that we can also, we, we call carotid oculomotor membrane is not so tight as the, as the distal one. So as you can see, some venous connection, venous channel can connect this segment with the cavernous sinus. Uh, this is a controversial point. Why? Because for some author, this segment in between the two rings is not in the cavernous sinus and it's not in the intradural space, and it's true, totally true. But from a surgical point of view, we sometimes, we can consider the clinical segment as part of the cavernous sinus because of the uh, venous connection. When we are removing the uh, anterior cranial process, we can most, very frequently, we can uh, observe a vigorous bleeding, which is coming from the cavernous sinus. And we need to put some fibrin glue in order to stop the bleeding, because sometimes it's to make very difficult to, to remove the client of the process because the bleeding is uh, too strong, okay? So once again, we were at this level. So the distal lural ring is maybe the, the point that is uh, telling us where the intradural portion of the internal carotid artery starts. And uh, regarding the paraclinal aneurysm, we can consider a different type. You have a many classification. I see that it's very useful to follow uh, any classification when this classification makes you uh, um, take some strategy, okay? Most of the time we can identify uh, two major aneurysm, follow Professor De Oliveira, the superior one and the inferior one, um, in many cases, to expose this aneurysm, we need to remove the anterior clinoid process for, uh, in order to expose the clinoidal segment. And we can do it uh, intradurally, as you can see here, or you can also choose extradurally. I think that uh, it is, uh, for me, it's the same. There is no big difference because the anatomy is the same intra or extra durally is the same. You need to, to cut the tree attachment in order to expose the clinoidal segment. Um, in my experience, uh, I prefer the intradural because in 20% of the cases, in paraclinal aneurysm, you don't need to remove the anterior clinoidal process. Um, I, I usually choose uh, extra dural when, when, when I have to, to deal with a tumor instead of a vascular lesion, but both uh, um, techniques are very uh, common and very useful for this kind of aneurysm. I like to share some example. This is the example I showed at the beginning, just as a giant uh, through ophthalmic aneurysm. So after learning anatomy, you can uh, perform the, the appropriate approach 
as you can see here, I, I did the terrenal approach. You need to open in the cilium fissure and expose the aneurysm, as you can see here. Then you need to remove the anterior clinoidal process and then expose the clinoidal segment of internal carotid artery. And finally, you can not only clip the aneurysm, this is one of the advantages of the microsurgery, but also you can decompress the optic nerve. The patient recovered part of the, uh, her visual deficit after the surgery. Um, you, can, you can see here the post-op contract. So this is the important to know and practice the um, microsurgical anatomy. As I told you before, you can also do this uh, surgery by an extra, extra dural uh, techniques. Um, very similar case. In this case, this is a true ophthalmic aneurysm, the superior one. I did a terrenal approach, but in this case, I removed the clinoid process by the next dural uh, road. Um, it's important to identify and drill the lateral wall of the orbit, and you will find this structure, which is the meningo orbitary band. Um, when you, after cutting the meningo orbitary band, you can do a, what I say, mini middle fossa peeling just to expose just the first centimeter of the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus in order to see the anterior cranial the process. And then you can remove the anterior cranial the process and expose the internal carotid artery at the, seg at the clinoidal segment. And then just go directly to the depth of your uh, approach and open the, the dura matter in a T fashion shape. So with one, one arm to the frontal side, the other one to the temporal side, and just go directly and expose the aneurysm. Here, I before clipping, I just open the distal dural ring and just put a clip. So you can choose both way. In case you have to deal with the inferior variant of paraclinal aneurysm, most of the time, in this case, you need to remove the cranial process. I would say at least, I would say 100% of the cases, and uh, maybe near 100%, you will need to fenestrate clip in order to uh, treat this aneurysm. Here, after remove the dura covering the cranial segment, I think it's very important to identify the inferior border of the cranial segment, then complete the drilling. You can see here, the internal carotid artery in the intradural aspect and here, and here in the extradural aspect. This is the distal dural ring. So this is important to know the anatomy. Then you need to cut the distal dural ring. How much? As much as you need. Sometimes you need to cut in 360 degree in order to expose very well the aneurysm. And here, after opening, a wide opening, the distal dural ring, you can you are able to expose the anterior aspect of the aneurysm and neck, here the posterior one. So I completed here a 360 degree exposure. And finally, you will, you will be um, ready to put a fenestrated clip. Okay. Uh, one more example uh, regarding this giant aneurysm. Something you need to know the anatomy, as I, as I told you before, not only in the brain, not only in the, in, in the skull vein, but also in the cervical portion of the carotid artery because you need to do the high flow bypass, in this case, for this giant ophthalmic aneurysm. So we did the terrenal approach, then we, go, we went to the, to the neck and the sec. The, carotid artery, the common carotid artery, then the external carotid artery, the internal carotid artery, we are ready to perform a high flow bypass. We took a graph from the radial artery, and then we complete the terrenal approach, open the cilium fissure, and then we did the anastomosis at the level of the M2 segment, and then we came back to the neck, and this is the way we could treat this complex lesion. I'd like to complete with one more case. I hope it can run. No. 
No sé qué pasó. Compartí pantalla. No sé. Sí, sí, ¿no? Y ahora se abre. Sí. No sé si lo, no corría, me parece. I like to just to share one more case because it's a video, 3D video that could be useful for. In some cases, I show you. En este caso, ahora, la próxima. ¿Qué pasó? Mejor. Tenemos acá. Unfortunately, the video is not running, so I will finish my lecture here. Thank you for your attention. Okay, very good. Thank you, doctor. So. Now uh, we finished the, the, the first uh, anatomic and, and surgical talk and we have to leave now until 7 uh, p.m. to go on with the, with the talks. Sorry for the delay for the first talk, but we will make up in the next rounds of lectures. Thank you very much. Okay. We will vamos, see at 7 p.m. today. Okay. Uh, vamos a hacer una cosa, por favor. Uh, vamos a introducir a ti a los miembros del panel. You, sí. I want to, you to meet the people here today, okay? Yeah. Can, we, okay. can you have a few minutes, sir? Of, yeah. 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 Well, a couple of minutes because we only have the, 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 the room available for two minutes more. Oh, well, okay. This I'm is sorry. The, the big Anyways, problem. We'll anyway, we can introduce ourselves uh, this evening, if you prefer. Yeah, yeah, this evening we will all meet. Okay, very okay, good. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for your Thank patience. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Okay, I guess we'll see each other uh, at the next session. And so that ends this. this uh, I'm going to stop recording. And yeah, that was a fly. Tell me, 